What is up, everybody? Jay now here with my UFC 218 recap video. And yes, I am late. It happened this past Saturday in Detroit, Michigan. We were at the bar. We got too drunk. <laughs> I, I remember who won, but I remember no details. I got so drunk that I didn't wake up until about 3.30 in the afternoon. And I were at graveyards. So I got up enough to go over to the homie's house, eat up all their food, go to work, wake up this afternoon, watch the entire card. You gotta watch those prelims if you didn't. I didn't do any predictions, but oh my wow. Especially the Maderos Cowboy uh, Alavera fight. Wow. So you gotta watch those prelims, but um, I did watch the entire card just now, so let me hurry up and get this video out before I go back to work. <laughs> now, on to the main card. I got, I made five predictions. I got four out of five. Good night for me. The first fight is the first one, is the only one that I did not get. I chose Michelle Waterston. I was nervous against Tisha Torres. I, I knew, I had a feeling Tisha Torres' strength would play a big factor, and it did. The first round, she was able to win that round. I think she just kind of out-muscled Michelle. Um, she was, she was, she was kind of quicker in some spots as well. Um, we hadn't seen Tisha in a while. This was a good showing for her. The second round, I think, went to Michelle. She was able to take her down a whole position. She didn't do much damage, but she held her down for like four minutes of that round. So I think that that round went to her just because of the position and the control that she uh, had. The third round was probably Tisha's most dominant round. She actually did damage to Michelle. Again, she was able to out-muscle her. She was able to take her, deck, take her down, muscle up against the fence. This was a good victory uh, for Tisha Torres, who I believe is like two fights away from really getting a title shot. It's two impressive victories. So who do you think is next for Tisha Torres? I think it should definitely be a top five, top seven opponent. So there you go. Now the next fights, I all got right. So I'm not going to go through the whole, let's just talk about it. Now, next fight, we saw Eddie Alvarez get the whew, victory over Justin Gaethje. This fight lived up to all of the hype. Let's get into it. This was a hard fight. They were both thrown with so much power. Eddie just had more diversity, more creativity, and more offensive, a higher offensive output. Uh, I didn't look at the actual stats, but I know he seriously outpaced Justin Gaethje. Justin Gaethje was going to that leg early. We know that Eddie is susceptible to those leg kicks and boy did he do damage to the point where Eddie had a switch up stance in that second round. Uh, he was kicking that leg out from Eddie. Eddie was falling when he was or moving. The leg was buckling every time he kicked it. So some serious noticeable damage to Eddie's leg but it was not enough. Eddie was going to the body and that's what I said he should do. Because if you notice from Justin Gaethje, he tends to gasp because he fights with such ferocity. The thing is, he, sim he just simply outlasts his opponents even though he tends to gasp. I knew Eddie probably would have the cardio advantage and if he could outpace him and go to that body, which is exactly what he did. But again, Justin damaged that leg. He busted up uh, Eddie's uh, face. His lip was nice and fat. He drew some blood. D dude. This is not just no one's gonna want to fight Justin because even if you beat him, I think you're gonna take a butt whooping. So, uh, uh, the body shots, Eddie Alvarez, multiple body shots, uppercuts to the body, also a lot of uppercuts to the face. Justin's a little too willing to take punishment, and even he said so. Let's get to the end here. This end happened in the third round, towards the end of the first round. Actually, Justin actually landed and had, um, uh, I think he landed the cleaner shot, which kind of begun this little flurry. They were going back and forth, and then Eddie landed. A knee from the depths of the earth <laughs> that boom, Justin's head up and his body down. <laughs> After that, I think, oh, uh, he, he held his hands up because he knew it was over, but they didn't stop it yet. So he just landed like two more shots for good measure and it was over. Justin tried to get up. He couldn't even get to a knee and he fell back over. It was done. This knee was devastating great win for Eddie Alvarez he's you know, king of king of violence I believe is what they were fighting for champion of violence <laughs> so great win for Eddie Alvarez who stays in that top five so who would you like to see him fight next lots of great fights in that lightweight division now next up I got a, a I guess I was going to keep saying it. We saw Henry Cejudo get the unanimous decision victory over Sergio Pettis. He was basically, he was stronger than him. I knew that would happen. Although Sergio did a very good job of avoiding damage on the ground, of avoiding getting it submitted, a lot of going back and forth. This was a chess match grappling battle where we just saw Henry was better. This was a chess match of which Henry was just simply better. In fact, some of the way he was able to hold his position and ride Sergio's back as Sergio was flipping and trying to move and trying to get about, it was impressive. You really saw that gold medal caliber wrestler here. He had to bring it out because I think he thought it would be, don't take no chances with Sergio on the feet. He was right. <laughs> 
he was right, but this wasn't the most impressive victory. In fact, there was some booing, so I don't think he's gonna get a title shot off of this. Probably gonna have to get another win like his last one against Wilson Hayes, but either way, who would you like to see Henry Cejudo fight next? He probably needs to fight Joseph Benavides again. That's how what I think. What do you think? I think he needs to fight Joseph Benavides again. So now, let's next co-main event. We saw <laughs> Francis Ngannou beat Alistair Overeem. Okay, this man is scary. He is, oh, okay, this ended in the, in the uh, first round in about 30 some odd seconds, 40 seconds. Someone let me know exactly the seconds there. They were kind of really no feeling each other out. Alistar went to get a body lock and get him up against the cage because Alistar knew he didn't really want him in space. Did you know that uh, Francis won some kind of world record for power punch? I don't even know what that means, but okay. So they break the lock, they're in space. Francis lands like a two point com uh, combination. Um, Alistar dips his head and actually Alistar dips his head he's actually moving backwards this punch didn't even land all the way y'all Francis came up with a left that nearly took Alistar's head clean off I'm not joking in the replay in the slow motion replay it looked worse it looked like Alistar's neck stretched it looked like his head touched the back his back it, his heels came up his heels came up <laughs> the, Alistar was on the ground stiff for minutes. He was out for minutes. Alistar landed this, 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 uh, uh, I believe it was a, uh, um, a left hook, like a low left hook. Head all the way up, flies off his feet down there, on the back. For good measure, Francis rains down another shot, bow! And then Alistar remains still. Toes curled, stiff as a board. Arms not even can't even touch the ground because his body's stiff for minutes. Real concern. We were really concerned. If you look at the people's reactions who were there, they were truly, truly concerned. Uh, um, <laughs> as John said on uh, commentary afterwards in his podcast with Kenny Florian, he's Francis is gonna kill somebody. Francis is going to kill somebody with one of those <laughs> aftershots. It's scary. It's he's scary. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> so he's going to get a title shot. <laughs> he's going to get a title shot against Steve Mayo Chase, okay? And um, oh my, wow. Uh, afterwards, I told you this man's a star. His little, the broken English he has with his accents, it's charming. It's part of the character. Um, um, he said uh, something about the, the slavery that we just, the video that we just saw with the Libyan, with the young men, the refugees being sold into slavery on an actual slave market. He brought that up. He said, F that, F raise and so. So he's thinking up outside of himself. This man was just homeless like five, six years ago. He has a deep story to tell that's relatable in an international way. And because M uh, MMA is an international sport, he's again, he's very charming. He has an easy niceness to him, even though he is a killer. The contrast between his personality and the way he fights is it's completely 180. It is, my gosh, good thing he's a nice guy. <laughs> so he looks like an action figure. He's it. He's going to get a title shot. And I don't want to say any predictions yet, but I think he is what the heavyweight division has been looking for. A shot, a boost of energy, of youth, of charisma, and then of just scary. We talk about the heavyweight champs, the baddest man on the planet. Francis Nagano, he gets this championship. He'll be the baddest man on the planet. Hi, just nothing but potential there. Who would you like to see him fight next? He's getting a title shot. Now, <laughs> main event and still the UFC featherweight champion, Max Blessed Holloway, taking out Jose Aldo for the second time in the third round. I think, it's, I think the first fight ended the third round as well. This one was more technical. Jose was better. He was healthier. He did have leg shots here. He did affect Max Holloway. He did land shots against Max Holloway. So this was a healthier uh, Jose Aldo. I believe him when he said he had a leg injury in the last fight. It didn't matter. Max was better. The, the, he outstruck him, the higher offensive output, the more diversity, the better combinations. He moved, literally moved Jose around that entire octagon the whole time. He bait him into these brawls at the end of the round, which he knew was tiring Jose out. In fact, at the end of the first, he actually went over and said to the commentators, the, the male man's tired. He literally said that during the fight, the swag. This, okay, 
Success is, is preparation meets opportunity, right? I don't think I've ever seen a fighter more prepared for his opportunity. Uh, Max looks like he's been champ for two years. He just looks so solid, so settled in his position, in that octagon. The way he, even the way he was coming in with the suit, with the shiny red tie, the way his swag, the look in his eye. I think he's going to hold this belt for a while, y'all. Let's get into the finish. Again, uh, he baited him into a bra. He just turned up the energy and kept going forward, and he baited... Um, Jose into a brawl which tired him out and then he just turned up. I mean, he drowned Jose with offense, working the entire body, threw some kicks as well, backed him up against the cage, dropped him. Or actually, Jose went for a takedown. He was trying to move because he was stunned. Blood all over the face, severe cut and everything. He wasn't making it out of this third round. We all knew that. He got to the ground. He's trying to move, trying to move. Eventually, he, had to, he gave up the back and that one, it was over. We, Max was landing shots, elbows. He followed him the whole time. He just, he just drowned him in offense. Jose looked like he was drowning in offense. You know, so, uh, stop the fight, great stoppage, great win. Frankie Edgar's next. And if Max can get back past Frankie Edgar, because I do believe that that's going to be a, that's a different test right there. The offensive output of Frankie Edgar, the uh, cardio of Frankie Edgar. I, it's a different, the wrestling of Frankie Edgar. This is a different test. And I think it will be very difficult. I think Frankie's going to be a harder fight for him than Jose. So if he can get past Frankie, he gonna hold this bell for a long time. I'm excited for Max. I'm excited for Francis. I'm excited for Eddie. I'm excited. <laughs> so this was a great card. Let me know how you did on your picks. Let me know uh, what you like to see for the future. Any injury updates, especially on Eddie Alvarez, that leg and everything. Uh, so yeah, just let me know what you thought. Let me know what you thought of the prelims because I did watch them. Let me know what you thought of those as well. Uh, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I'm now on Snapchat. Subscribe, like, talk to me, take care, and goodbye.